Welcome to today's D Deluxe Lab with the title Understanding Passenger Flow, a Gender Perspective on Public Transport. I'm very happy that you tuned in today to get some more insights on this topic and uh, to uh, listen to this conversation with uh, Victoria from the industry. We put in place the Deluxe Lab uh, to, to give you some insights about different topics that are uh, concerning our customers, which are in public transport, city development and in retail chains. Deluxe is a producer and provider of sensor technologies that we put in place in vehicles uh, as well as in buildings. And we analyze the people flows and other KPIs through our, uh, our, through our softwares, which are Deluxe Enumeris and Deluxe Citizens. And uh, on a regular basis, we, um, we provide the Deluxe Lab uh, to, to talk about different things. And this uh, edition is one of the um, short editions or the special editions that are um, uh, under the name Sensing with Care and um, relate to the sensor launch that we had a few weeks ago of the SLS 1000, our deluxe structured light sensor that we put in place now in vehicles. The Deluxe Lab will, uh, uh, will take about 30 minutes, so if you have questions, do not hesitate to ask them uh, in the chat or through uh, email at webinar at deluxe.com. I am Julia, I'm Head of Sales of the Solution Department at Deluxe, and together with my team, we work uh, directly with the end customer who work with the data that we gather. And today in this session, I warmly welcome Victoria Bettina. She works uh, with public transport projects since she's 18. Uh, for example, for the EU Silk, uh, Silk Road Development Project. And today she's a consultant at Rambol, uh, where she works uh, at the German market on um, different national and international projects. And she also has just finished her a doctoral thesis. So uh, I very congr I congratulate you uh, very much and I warmly welcome you, Victoria. Hi. Hello. First of all, I would like to thank you, Julia, for this interview and Dirac Slav for organizing such online meetings to promote and exchange of experience on current trends and needs for mobility sector development. It is really a pleasure for me to share with you and with your audience um, our Rumble uh, gender and mobility study outcomes as well as my gathered knowledge within the sector. Um, a Rumble uh, gender and mobility project um, was implemented um, from summer 2020 mm -hmm. until spring 2021. Uh, before Rumble has um, before Rumble has um, established this project, two main meetings uh, pushed our idea of really deeply analyze gender mobility difference and establish the international project supported by various um, public transport organizations. The first meeting has <laughs> been held in 2018. Yes, and it was named Girls' Day. Since there are still a small percentage of women being involved in transport or engineering service, um, Rumble, um, Rumble through this meeting, uh, invi in meeting invite and, uh, and um, encourage young women to be a part of uh, various engineering disciplines and share our knowledge how sustainable infrastructure could be designed. And um, at this open event, event of Girls' Day, the uh, Federal Chancellor Angela Merkel was invited as well. During this uh, open event, event girls could learn uh, themselves traffic planning approach and how, for example, um, to, to, to learn what is important to plan a cycle path. Um, through VR glasses, we could also give um, visitors a chance to discover Rumble successfully implemented projects like uh, virtual bike tours in Copenhagen. And okay. uh, the second meeting was connected to our presentation of Rumble experiences of mobility needs and gender differences at the Embassy of Denmark in Germany. So we recognize that um, gender topic, especially within public transport sector, is still not fully covered. And we wanted to know why, uh, what are the differences, and how women and men behave actually 
actually what are their real needs. Oh. So we pushed this idea first within Rumble to learn gender mobility difference at the global scales covering seven different countries with the possible support from from uh, relevant within public transport sector stakeholders. So at the end, we set a great cooperation with VBB, the public transport operator in Berlin, uh, Helsinki Regional Transport Authority, and with Regional Stockholm, who is uh, responsible for all transport, um, um, public transport uh, finance, uh, healthcare, and, and um, public transport operation in Stockholm County, and with Traffic for Kia, uh, who is responsible for overall long-term infrastructure planning for road, um, air, sea, uh, transport in Sweden. Perfect. So, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Victoria, for giving you uh, for giving us uh, first of all a very broad overview of what uh, Rumble uh, studies are. Uh, I also know girls stay from school still, uh, so it has been established. I think when I was uh, still, yeah, uh, in school, and really appreci appreciated this uh, uh, initiative. And um, yeah, what I would like to know now uh, about the Rumble studies that uh, you gathered in the first steps is uh, if you have been surprised of the uh, results of your of your of the fields of your studies. Yes, um, our team, our project team was definitely surprised. First of all, we really recognize that the gender difference exists at all continents through the whole world, and I don't want to say now only about women but more about different needs in transport between women and men. And it's just to notice that urban transport should cover all these needs, providing high level of service quality. Therefore, our study, our survey did include actually uh, both genders. Mm -hmm. Almost all our project countries, um, based on their development, infrastructure, availability, gen general policy, as well as culture, showed different results of transport usage between women and men. Um, however, we have learned that actually it is no matter on which continent women live and travel, they all need to, to feel safe, themselves safe while traveling. All women have their needs in proper public transport planning as well as safe infrastructure availability. Women who have kids require a better public transport operational schedule, better station design, its functionality. Um, moreover, here once again a classical confirmation that women have uh, multimodal trip chains. And the latest interesting finding from my point of view, um, there are still visible difference in earning which directly actually affect on usage of different transport modes. For example, uh, it could be one of the reasons why women travel often with public transport while men um, more likely um, to use sharing, like car sharing service or maybe scooter sharing service. And um, moreover, when we are talking about public transport, I would like also to pay attention that actually in Berlin, women and men both highly, um, highly associate public transport with um, sustainability. And it's about um, 60% both men and women share this, this um, idea or thinking. Yeah. That is interesting and uh, also for me very surprising. So there are some outcomes where uh, which I wouldn't have expected either. Um, and did you find any um, differences amongst the continents? Let's say, for example, for uh, European and Asian cities uh, where you're working at? Yes, um, actually in all our project countries, as said before, women on a daily basis use public transport more often than men. We could also see um, general differences between Asian and European project countries. Um, the Nordic, Nordic countries like uh, Denmark, Norway, Finland, uh, Sweden had lower PT public transport usage. It was The average was about 20%. And compared to India and Singapore, uh, where they had 42% and 50%. Um, nevertheless, in Berlin, public transport model split for women and men was still high, and um, it showed really slight difference, um, like 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 50 and and 44 percent, meaning that six percent uh, only six percent more women use public transport uh, more than men. Mm -hmm. And uh, in addition, our research also shows that that women to a greater greater extent. Um, 
um, more than men feel uncomfor uncomfortable uh, walking to and from uh, and, and waiting at the public transport station uh, at, a, at the night time um, or in the evening, late evening. Mm -hmm. So in India, women uh, even don't try to, to, to travel at night time by public transport. They, they, they stay mostly at home. So um, around the studies countries, there were interesting outcomes that, that women uh, more than men um, use public transport mostly for going shopping, for example. Uh, in Berlin, 50, 56% more women than men use buses actually to go shopping or, or, or for running household. And um, where the, the same uh, indicator around all our studies countries was um, 21%. However, when we are talking about sustainability, uh, in Berlin, 60% more men than women associate sustainability with the buses, for example, and 85% and, um, more the men than women uh, associate train with sustainable transport mode. In Singapore, for example, uh, we were we are when we are talking about public transport association or in, in usage, yeah, we have we had also a strong percentage for men like. 37% more men than women associate buses with the traffic safe, and and 59% uh, more men than women associate um, uh, LRT uh, with a cheaper transport mode. Okay. And yeah, and and just last, the moreover, comparing European countries like like Germany, Denmark, Germany, Norway, we have also seen different um, difference in, in in usage of transport public or actually transport different transport modes. Uh, where in Nordic countries, both genders um, more often you drive bicycle than in Berlin, for example. And I think it depends, first of all, probably on safe and, and better cycling infrastructure and better road planning in Nordic countries. Definitely. Probably also a little bit of a culture uh, development, but uh, yes, yeah. that's uh, completely true. So thank you, uh, Victoria, for all these numbers. Um, now we got a status quo. Uh, what interests me now is what conclusions can be derived uh, from the study? How could public transport become more inclusive for women to use public transport? Yeah, uh, to make public transport more attractive for women, and actually for men, because men can also have similar needs while, for example, traveling with sure. kids or being in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. So we have to think about integration of all available transport mode. And it's not only about public transport improvement as a single mode. Since women are more prone to multimodal traveling, it will be great to improve mobility offers, integrating ticketing and payment system, for example. Mm, nevertheless, within the, the framework of our gender and mobility study, our project team um, identified um, five, uh, five main directions which could support public transport service improvement to be not only reliable, comfortable, but, but again, uh, both safe safe uh, for both genders. So um, as said before, it's, it's, it's proper travel uh, data collection for both genders and uh, its analysis, usage of, of uh, future public transport service uh, uh, improvement, proper planning and, and design of public transport infrastructure, uh, improve policy and include gender mainstreaming as a, as a strategic approach for assessing and um, implication of any planned action, uh, legislation, policy or other related program. And, and very important, um, involve more women, qualified uh, female urban planners, uh, female architects in, in transport and engineering sectors. They can bring actually their opinion uh, where and how uh, we could fulfill women needs while traveling and therefore also improve cities liability and urban life. This is also one of the suggestions of our last uh, Deluxe Lab to include those who are actually affected uh, because they probably have the best advice on how uh, they could cover best the needs. Yeah, you're completely right. And uh, do you have any um, best practices that you can share with us? You know, Julia, I must say, almost in all European countries, public transport operates proper and uh, public transport operators, they try to follow trends, they try to follow environmental action plans on global and country levels. 
the digitalization service also have has positive changes. However, uh, when we are talking about accessibility, which uh, for me means um, safe, uh, barrier-free, uh, quick access to public transport station, infrastructure, network integration, I don't know, fast connection, shorter connection between stops, um, um, connection from, from city center to living areas, etc. I would say from, from a user point of view, um, we also can include here better ticketing uh, service, affordability and so on. I would select two cities um, where I find I find uh, quite good public organization uh, planning uh, where this this transport mode really uh, integrated with other available urban transportation. So um, the first one is Amsterdam or actually the, the country itself. Uh, where we can see a strong integration between public transport and uh, non-motorized transport mode. And it's not only about better service planning, but um, also about non-motorized transport infrastructure design, uh, which shows better integration with, with public transport stops, better on-site barrier-free design with a quick access, access to public transport modes. We can see um, that the ticketing policy, like, like flexible offers or for, for taking bikes, um, Within, within public transport or booking system is, is also integrated uh, with, the, with the whole public transport service. Mm -hmm. So um, the Netherlands strongly promote non-motorized transport and sustainability development um, hubs at actually at public transport stations. Uh, also integrated it, uh, for example, with the taxi services, other, uh, other available sharing services. Yeah, Within the last year, Actually, they also keep. They also try to keep this this gender equi uh, equality equality uh, within transport sector. So um, the second, I would say, it's it's uh, the city of Vienna, mm -hmm. which which shows best example where mobility hubs are integrated with the public transport offers. This also includes planning, data collection, infrastructure design. This integration includes not only service planning or on-site design, but also digital integration. Um, like, like they they have this um, VN Mobile app, yeah, for, for for the whole actual network, including this mobility hubs. So all transport tickets um, could be, could be booked within within one system, uh, which makes actually public transport also more attractive for both changes. Uh, moreover, the, the the location of these mobility hubs are uh, no more than than in 500 meters, also in the, in the some some rural areas uh, from public transport stations. So, um, of course, London shows the best example of of uh, public transport accessibility. However, I was not there, and I could not really drive it, um, so I could not make my personal opinion and conclusion on it on the quality. <laughs> Yeah, but Amsterdam and uh, Vienna are e excellent examples, I would say. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for that. And you were talking a lot about data and obviously for uh, um, creating such a study, this is an essential part of it. Uh, what data would you say are most important uh, to gather and analyze um, uh, the, the gender um, uh, inequalities and how to solve them best? Yeah. So um, I would say there it's important to to um, together first is is the data data on age and and gender. This will Makes help sense. us understand real needs for different users uh, by by age groups and therefore develop a better offer. There is a OD matrix developed after the, uh, the OD matrix, which could give us an important base for public transport network, uh, stops planning, better understanding of, of urban transit planning, operation and establishment of, of management structures. Uh, then the different patterns of users, logically, uh, the win here is, is better service planning and integration. Um, all the object um, rec um, rec um, object um, recognition, for example, uh, number of passenger is, is traveling with the bikes, but but also with the baby stroller uh, in or, or in a wheelchair. So um, since the, uh, since the European countries have a goal to to propose 
um, uh, non-motorized transport as, as one of the sustainable mode with a positive environmental impact, it would be helpful actually if we could get the data and understand how to tailor our ticketing service or general public transport offers and even to understand um, urban transport, uh, which urban transport fleet do we need uh, in the future. Yeah. Mm, yes, totally. And uh, luckily, we can um, gather all this data with our sensor. So um, uh, we can perfectly work together to uh, to make a basis on this and uh, to analyze it on the long, long term. Um, if now you think uh, of a new project, for example, which uh, uh, could come up and um, you would get uh, Uh, at Rumble to redesign the public transport of a European city. What uh, would you tell your future client uh, to start? <laughs> or where, where would you yeah. where, where would you where would you start? Or what uh, recommendations could you give? Yeah, um, saying honestly, I live and I like how, for example, uh, public transport operators work in Berlin. I find it relatively reliable and affordable. Um, nowadays, I really see how the city, as well as VBB, BVG, transport operators improve their service and it makes me really happy. And step by step, it comes the whole uh, integrated digitalization, better public transport infrastructure planning, um, also adjustment um, trans transportation like, like bicycle with the new development high speed routes or uh, opening mobility hubs at public transport stations make public transport Uh, transportation more attractive for all genders. So I would say now my opinion about Berlin as the one of the developing European city and because I live here so I dream to set a really great urban transportation. So I would I would um, always start from uh, first um, first of all better gender life data connection collection. We have to understand where needs we have to learn on a, on a daily basis um, um, how both genders travel, and and I think it comes um, or it, it comes already. We started to talk about it, and and we see how the city and, and stakeholders are interested to develop this service, being more comfortable again for both genders, or let's say for all travelers. Yeah, because let's not not to forget about people with with reduced mobility. Yeah, mm -hmm. it can be again both men and women. Sure. So they also need to have. And, and accessible public transport. Um, um, having this clean uh, data, we could better design public transport station, uh, better plan its functionality or operational schedule. We could understand which stations uh, need, need to develop, um, for example, shopping district, uh, develop small urban park, parks or even urban areas. Um, to improve service um, as a next, improve service, network planning and integration uh, with a higher accessibility, especially in a rural area or, or in, a, in, a, in a city skirt. More and more I see um, that, um, that uh, private cars actually are winning against public transportation in these areas. Mm -hmm. And it's only because these areas are not um, proper covered by public transport network or their proposed service are not fully uh, sustainable uh, or, or suitable uh, with, uh, with the travel needs. Um, and uh, um, once pay a better attention to safe, to safety. I'm sure traveling at night not only an issue for women, but also for men. We have to draft a strategy how safety could be improved uh, starting from from the early, from the easiest thing. We all need to recognize that, that this problem is still there. We just do not talk about it. We have to start collect data, analyze it, and maybe even talk with, with some women more, more often and openly about their experience. And and the last, I would um, I would also pay attention to that attractiveness of public transport could could be improved by by its um, sustainability. Germany has already uh, issued the, the climate action plan 2050, um, which which clearly has a goal to reduce uh, green emission by by late by at least um, 70 percent by by 2040. Um, so and the public transport plays there a, a crucial role. 
the plan says that, that the next um, necessary steps toward, towards 2030-2040 um, transport targets is to determine the framework needed to ensure the, that new um, mm, um, that the new uh, propulsion te proposed technologies and energy forms will be will be used on a large scale. And actually, what I said before could be uh, the part of this, yeah, in order to improve it. So I think we are on the right way to to make um, the, the whole urban transport uh, network better. This is <laughs> correct, or we uh, uh, hope so, but I think it goes to the right direction. I think the state of mind is uh, uh, there. We just need to yeah, do it step by step. Hmm? Yeah. Um, okay. Where do you see the biggest challenges in terms of creating an equal, inclusive urban mobility? Uh, uh, it's a good question, um, but um, I would say the first is the, 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 the most difficult is political, uh, suitable to this gender topic political setup, uh, data collection and, and um, establishment of suitable smart technologies who could actually support this, this uh, live data collection and storage integration and everything. Um, and it's always important to have um, and it's difficult to have cooperation between transport operators, stakeholders, as well as um, between um, uh, between regional administration, yeah, and also to share the important data. So this is the, I would say within the last day, I always saw even within some projects, yeah, um, this uh, difficult things <laughs> to be implemented. Yeah, sure. I mean, no, nobody nobody said it's easier, but uh, let's focus on the on the main goal behind it. And uh, yeah, we all want to um, contribute to improving cities, improving urban transport because it benefits us all. I would say. Um, Victoria, my last question, since uh, the time has been. Um, quite advanced yet, what would be the uh, chances and advantages um, uh, for you to summarize if we um, now uh, start with a, with a changing of cities towards this direction? Yes, um, it depends about uh, which world region we are talking about, because challenges and needs, therefore advantages and, and chances, chances between um, De developed and developing countries would be completely different. In, in some developing countries, uh, gender mobility or smart data collection are still not even a topic. Yeah, There are more important needs just to organize reliable and comfortable service or improve uh, general planning. Um, however, um, if, if we are talking about European countries, um, here I could say um, such advantages um, like clear data aggregation and building and building uh, statistical data uh, uh, understanding of transport patterns and mobility for both both genders which could be fundamental uh, to develop um, uh, um, or to to, uh, to the development of evidence um, based gender sensitive policies um, establishment of, of cities uh, dialogues um, affordable and flexible um, fares for multimodal trips, uh, increased uh, quality and uh, accessibility to infrastructure, uh, improve the meaning of uh, new mobility service uh, such as carpooling uh, schemes, scooters sharing, ride pooling, uh, res service reservation for women, um, better planning of, of night services, um, mobility freedom for all citizens like like for citizens and tourists and um, of course environmental benefits and uh, liability of european cities yeah very good so uh, imagine just um, one of our uh, people from the audience wanted to um, get some more insight of some more information about rumble or uh, do a study with you where could they reach you um we, we we are all uh, we have a rumble official uh, official web page 
um, you can always um, type Rumble Berlin and then you will directly uh, get the whole data of our team and um, yeah, and the whole um, our emails, telephone, and I'm I'm really openly uh, always. Um, I ask and write and uh, contact people in LinkedIn, so um, your audience can can always write me or just call me. There is also my mobile phone. Perfect. Thank you very much, Victoria, for this uh, great and valuable insight. Um, I, I was very happy to talk to you about this topic. So. Um, Thank you. Thank you also to the audience um, for listening. The next Deluxe Lab will uh, take place on the 10th of June with another special edition on Sensing with Care uh, before we move on to other topics. Uh, if you want to, you can uh, reach us also on LinkedIn uh, on the Deluxe Intercom uh, webpage or you can send us an email for any uh, comments, suggestions or questions uh, to webinar at deluxe.com. So thank you very much and see you next time.